Guys, check out this new meta-analysis looking at the effects of post-exercise cold water immersion on muscle growth. Now, it's not uncommon for people to employ various recovery strategies to help reduce fatigue and muscle soreness after resistance training. One popular method that I'm frequently asked about is cold water immersion, which involves submerging the body in cold water to promote recovery. Research has shown that cold water immersion can reduce muscle soreness, decrease perceived fatigue, and shorten the time it takes to recover after intense intense exercise. But here's the big question. While these benefits may help with short-term recovery, does cold water immersion actually support or hinder muscle growth over time? So what does the research have to say about this? Well, although cold water immersion is often praised for its recovery benefits, we don't know enough about whether these effects are advantageous when it comes to muscle building. Since resistance training induced muscle growth depends on an optimal balance between muscle damage, repair, and adaptation, the use of extreme extreme temperature therapies like cold water immersion might alter this balance in ways that could impact hypertrophy. So to address this gap in knowledge, a recent 2023 paper by Panero and colleagues, which was the first meta-analyses of its kind, set up to review the existing literature and determine the effects of post-exercise cold water immersion, specifically in combination with resistance training on muscle growth outcome. Now, their goal was to analyze whether this popular recovery method helps or potentially hinders gains when used consistently after resistance exercise. Now, in today's video, I'll be breaking down the findings of this meta-analysis and explore whether cold water immersion is helping or hurting your muscle growth potential. So let's dive in. So first and foremost, to ensure high quality data, the researchers included studies in their meta-analyses that met the following strict criteria. Number one, a randomized study design. The studies had to use a randomized design and directly compare cold water immersion plus resistance training to resistance training paired with either a sham treatment, an active form of recovery or passive recovery. And perhaps more importantly, these studies also had to measure changes in muscle mass using either a DEXA, MRI, CT, ultrasound, biopsy or circumference measurements. And studies were only included if participants performed at least two resistance training sessions per week for a minimum duration of four weeks or more. Now, this ensured that the data reflected long-term adaptations to resistance training. So let's take a look at the results. Well, eight interventions met these strict inclusion criteria with the durations ranging from four through to 12 weeks. The participants were young adults aged 20 to 26 years with seven studies including only males and one including both male and females. Four of the studies involved resistance trained participants while the remaining were untrained individuals. Cold water immersion was applied for 10 minutes in three of the studies, 15 minutes in two of the studies and for 20 minutes in three of the studies with water temperatures ranging from somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. Now, the model on the screen estimates from the primary analysis provided some evidence that resistance training alone led to slightly greater hypertrophy adaptations compared to the resistance training combined with cold water immersion. And while the differences weren't dramatic, the effect sizes were small, but they still favored resistance training without cold water immersion. This suggests that although cold water immersion may help with recovery, it might slightly blunt or attenuate the muscle growth response when used consistently after resistance training. Now, don't close out the video because there is definitely more to the story. So what does this all mean? While cold water immersion doesn't completely prevent muscle growth, the results of this meta-analysis suggest that it may slightly reduce gains compared to resistance training alone. These findings align with the previous research showing that cold water immersion reduces the natural inflammatory response that occurs after training, along with other intrinsic processes like protein transcription, which might play a role in these small reductions in muscle growth over time. However, it's important to note that while this meta-analysis suggests a small reduction in muscle size when incorporating cold water immersion, the included studies have a number of limitations and inconsistencies. For example, the short four to 12 week study duration means it is difficult to determine if the comparison between groups could have varied over longer timeframes. The studies included in this meta-analysis also employed a wide array of direct and indirect measurements, including muscle biopsy, MRI and ultrasound, as well as DEXA and circumference measurements. 
We know that direct imaging modalities like MRI and ultrasound have been shown to be far more accurate for assessing hypertrophic adaptations compared to indirect modalities, which limits the validity of these research findings. Meaning, future studies investigating the effects of cold water immersion on muscle growth should seek to employ more direct imaging methods of muscle growth. Another point to note is that the pooled subject population consisted primarily of young men. In fact, only one of the eight studies involved female participants and no studies involved adolescents or older adults, meaning these findings cannot necessarily be generalized to other populations. Lastly, the resistance training protocols varied greatly between studies. So without consistent or standardized training protocols, it is difficult to determine whether cold water immersion genuinely impacts muscle growth or if the observed effects are simply due to differences in training volume, proximity to failure or muscle group selection. Now, to summarize my thoughts on this topic, the primary analysis of this paper show that resistance training alone resulted in slightly greater hypertrophic adaptations compared to combining resistance training with cold water immersion. However, since the differences were quite small, it's possible that the reduction in muscle growth might not be significant enough to matter for the average person, but it did consistently favor resistance training without cold water immersion. So my parting thoughts. For those who are more serious about maximizing hypertrophy until we have more high quality studies implementing those direct measures of muscle growth, it may be best to limit cold water exposure or at the very least reserve it for days when you aren't resistance training. This way you can still get the benefits from its recovery without potentially compromising your gains.